Senator Ludlam. Thank you, uh, Mr Chair. I thank Senator Seawitt for her contribution, her thoughtful contribution. Um, one of the reasons that this debate has uh, spilled over to today is that the Attorney-General unnecessarily detained the chamber for well over an hour, refusing to provide a document. Um, effectively, his response to uh, scrutiny of bills committee that raised 19 separate concerns and having uh, had the opportunity now to review some of the concerns that they raised, um, I might come back to some of those later in the debate. Um, we have, as Senator Seawood indicated, moved to uh, debate on the first substantive amendment, which is um, the Australian Greens amendment, relating to the definition of a computer and the fact that this bill mandates an extraordinary expansion to how uh, how the law uh, henceforth will understand to be the definition of a computer and expand it to mean uh, or to include the definition of a network or networks. Um, a couple of days ago, on the 24th, there was a piece in the Sydney Morning Herald titled Fears ASIO to Monitor Entire Internet um, that noted the fact that the Senate had begun debating this legislation by Ben Grubb. And the fears uh, that the article describes are that effectively, as many witnesses and submitters to the Joint Committee noted, that this deliberate expansive definition of computer means effectively with one single warrant, ASIO could spy on any device connected to the internet anywhere in the world. I find it remarkable that under the weight of this evidence the Labor Party considers that that's okay. Uh, have had, I guess, to my satisfaction that this is not a drafting error, this is in fact intentional, and put the question to Senator Brandis last night. And I think just before the debate closed out, Senator Brandis confirmed to Senator Macdonald and to myself that that is in fact the intention of the Australian government that a single. Uh, Senator Brandis. An entire misrepresentation of what I said, and I can't believe that any person could have misunderstood what I said and then represent what Senator Ludlam has just said to be Thank you, what in fact I said. That, is, you, that was a lie, Madam Chairman. Senator Ludlam, I would insist the Chamber if you would withdraw. Withdraw what? I've just been accused of lying. That's unparliamentary. So Senator Brandis hasn't indicated what he wants me to withdraw. You don't get to come in here and accuse people of lying. Senator so I Cameron. ask Senator Brandis to withdraw that Senator immediately. Cameron. Order. Senator Brandis is entitled to take a point of order, but he is not entitled to accuse a member of lying. Thank you. Uh, Senator Brandis, your claim is unparliamentary and should be withdrawn. Uh, I withdraw the word lie and substitute the word deliberately mislead the chamber. Be unhelpful to leave it at that, Senator Brandis. You need to withdraw the word deliberately. Uh, well, uh, if I have to, I will. But the statement that has just come from the senator is Thank you, misleading. Thank you, Senator Brandis, for assisting the chamber. Senator Ludlam. <clears throat> I'd hoped maybe we could commence today's debate in a rather more parliamentary spirit than it was left off yesterday, but evidently that's not to be. What I will do then um, is extend to Senator Brandis the opportunity to confirm for us. Because uh, I have no intention, certainly no wish, to mislead this place or other senators or the public who are following this debate closely as to uh, what is the maximum number of devices that a warrant could capture under the government's drafting of this bill. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. All those in favour say aye. Senator Ludlam. Note for those not familiar with Senate procedure. Senator Brandis isn't willing to confirm what he said yesterday. I just, I've asked you a direct. You don't have the call, Senator Brandis. Senator Ludlam. You don't have the call, Senator Brandis. Senator Ludlam, please continue your remarks. Senator Brandis, you don't have the call. Senator Ludlam. Thank you. I'll just ask a direct question because I don't know how to put this any more simply than I've done a number of times. What's the maximum number of devices that a single computer access warrant could capture under the government's drafting? The Senator Brandis. Thank you, Madam Acting Chair. Um, Madam Acting Chair, I'm not going to indulge Senator Ludlam's tactic of delaying this debate by this filibuster. My answer to his question is the same answer I gave to him yesterday. It hasn't changed overnight. Senator Ludlam. So, Senator Brandis, my understanding of the answer that you provided to Senator Macdonald and then myself is that there is actually no upper limit. There is no maximum number of devices 
uh, or no cap, I suppose, which is uh, what the Australian Greens amendment goes to directly. I think it's extraordinary that the government would draft an amendment that the Labor Party would then support without criticism, as far as I can tell, that sets no upper limit on the number of devices that a single ASIO warrant could catch. And so, not just in theory, but practically, a single warrant could be uh, sought and received to capture a single mobile phone handset, or a local area network, or an entire university campus, or an entire township. Or, I think you can see where this is going, there's no upper limit on the number of devices. Now, if I'm, Senator Brandis obviously has responded fairly heatedly. If I'm in error in my interpretation of the answer he provided to us yesterday, I'll, uh, I would be delighted, actually, if my, if my understanding is in error, because what the Greens have proposed and what this amendment seeks to do is to impose an upper limit. I get the argument as to why ASIO uh, thinks it's reasonable that they shouldn't need to uh, apply for a single warrant for every single device. I can quite understand, um, under the circumstances in which we operate today, where different people or in a, a different, you know, in a particular residence, there might be a dozen um, handsets, laptops, desktop computers, tablets. Goodness knows. Uh, and so, understanding the purpose uh, behind ASIO not wanting to have to apply for a single warrant for every single device. We have, nonetheless, extremely serious concerns, and it's not just the Greens alone who are concerned in this, that leaving it uncapped, leaving it at the discretion either of ASIO uh, or, or the minister to allow as many devices as ASIO sees fit in an uncapped way, is extraordinary. It requires amendment. I hope I have the government, the opposition and crossbench support for that. Senator Lionhall. Do you wish to speak to the same amendment? I do, uh, Madam Deputy Chair. Um, I share the same concerns in respect of the open-ended nature of the, um, of the uh, bill as it's currently written. Um, and it is not just the Greens who are of the opinion that this could give um, access to the entire internet on a single warrant. I do too, and so does the Institute of Public Affairs. They've raised this issue with me. There does need to be a, some sort of constraint on the scope of warrants issued under this section. It just can't be allowed to stand. It's a, it's a licence to snoop on anybody at any time, anywhere. Senator Xenophon. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Acting Chair. I do have a question. I know Senator Brandis unkindly suggested I was trying to filibuster the debate yesterday. I can assure him that is not uh, that is something I. I do not want to do. I just want to ask a very short question that may hopefully truncate this debate. In respect of, and I understand the answer given by the attorney, uh, that there is no upper limit in terms of the number of devices that can be accessed through a warrant, w will the Inspector General of Intelligence Services at least be able to ascertain how many devices uh, are uh, caught by such a warrant? In other words, in respect of a particular warrant, Will we at least be able to ascertain um, um, how many devices that warrant relates to, um, even in broad terms, whether it's a hundred, a thousand, a million? Uh, can we establish that? Is that is that ascertainable? Um, so I'll I'll rephrase the question as succinctly as I can uh, for the attorney. Uh, is the power proposed in this bill one that is it? Uh, I apologise. I'll just I'll withdraw that and put it as succinctly as I can. Will this power provide uh, some mechanism to establish how many devices have been caught by a particular warrant? Uh, is that something that can be the subject of scrutiny um, uh, by IGES, for instance? Uh, that would it would assist me greatly if we could establish that. Senator Brandis. Um, well, Senator Xenophon, the answer to your first question is that the warrant must describe that which uh, can be accessed pursuant to the terms of the warrant. So this is an exercise in description, and it, it is um, good practice that any warrant describes with particularity um, that which it um, captures. The answer to your second question is yes, the IGUS can. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. 
Senator Ludlam. Um, thank you, um, Madam Chair. I'll just go into a little bit of detail as to why I'm pursuing this um, concern and why the minister's dismissive attitude towards the concerns that the crossbenchers are raising is so profoundly irritating. This is not something that the Australian Greens have just plucked out of thin air. This is a uh, profoundly important expansion of surveillance powers. I wonder whether the minister—I understand that he's taking advice at the moment. But what I'm keen to do, perhaps for the benefit of those listening to this debate for whom these concepts might be somewhat new, whether the minister could just describe as succinctly as, as he likes um, what exactly uh, ASIO would be empowered to do under a computer access warrant. What does applying for such a warrant allow ASIO to do on you know, however we end up defining a computer or, or network of networks? Senator Brandis. Uh, what ASIO would be empowered to do would be that which is authorised by the warrant, which is in turn governed by the terms of the Act. Senator Ludlam. Thank you for your opaque and utterly unhelpful response. So would that include uh, monitoring of the device and the traffic that passes over it? Senator Brandis. Um, I don't have anything to add to my previous answer. Senator Ludlam. And you wonder why, why the debate progresses so slowly, Senator Brandis. That's just treating people with utter contempt. Just provide us with a plain English answer. The Senate is here to do its job, as are you as the Attorney General. Senator Ludlam, yes. please make your remarks through the through chair. Through the chair. Um, I, I uh, shall do so, Madam Chair. Senator Brandis, does the computer access warrant allow ASIO to monitor traffic that passes over a, a given device, however it's defined? Senator Brandis. Um, I've got nothing to add to my previous answer, Senator. Senator Ludlam. Uh, does uh, a computer access warrant allow ASIO to disrupt or install software uh, on, on a targeted device? The question is the amendment. Senator Xenophon. Uh, very, thank you, Madam Acting Chair. Very briefly, I can indicate that I will not support the Greens amendments for these reasons. I think that the, the concerns raised are legitimate. I think that from an operational point of view, simply limiting it, limiting it to no more than 20 devices is problematic. If there was a higher number, I would be more sympathetic. The fact that IGES does, can, uh, can ascertain the number of devices that have been uh, caught under a particular warrant gives me some comfort, although I would like to see in the longer term greater transparency in respect to this so that I just is in a position to say um, so many devices have been caught by particular warrants uh, after the event. I cannot see that that would in any way, from a security point of view, compromise an operation, but I think it's important for Australians to know how many devices may be caught under particular warrants. But uh, I think 20 is simply too low from an op operational point of view. Senator Ludlam. Thank you. Um, I thank Senator Xenophon for that contribution. I'm obviously very open. Um, to counter proposals. If you thought 50 was appropriate, if the Attorney General thought 200 was appropriate, um, the principle that I'm after here is that it not simply be Order, uncapped. 